August 9, 1977 was a hot summer day near the Pudgeon Sound. 20-year-old David Roth had decided it was a good opportunity to go swimming, so he headed down to nearby Silver Lake. While he was driving there, he spotted a young woman who was hitchhiking. He stopped, they talked, she got in the vehicle, and they drove down to a nearby convenience store. They bought a six pack, they got back in the car and they drove down to a wooded area near Mariner High School. They were having a conversation and at some point, David Roth uh, offered a joint to the woman, which she refused. He then tried making sexual advances at her and again, she refused. That's not what she was there for. He was getting agitated and she was getting very nervous. She let it be known that she'd had enough and she wanted to go home now. But David Roth was not having it. He couldn't take no for an answer. He wouldn't take no for an answer. And so he reached over and grabbed a nearby bungee cord and wrapped it around her neck. He squeezed so hard that she passed out and urinated on herself. Thinking that she was dead, he got out of his car. He went around to the passenger side and he dragged her body out. He placed her near a bush, just like trash. He took the two empty beer cans and he threw them out. He didn't care. So he turns around, he's walking back to his vehicle as if nothing happened. Then he takes a one last look just to take in the view of his, uh, his victim lying on the ground. But to his surprise, she's wiggling. She is not dead. She was just unconscious. But he can't have her telling anyone what he did. So he goes back to the rear of his vehicle. He opens his trunk and he takes out his 22 caliber Marlin rifle. He loads up the cartridge, seven bullets. He walks over to his victim and he empties the cartridge into her head. He then walks back to his vehicle, puts his rifle back after picking up the shell casings around the body and he drives off. He leaves the scene. Nothing happened, right? So on August 13th, there is a call that comes into the Snohomish County Sheriff's Department. The report says that a man was seen at a park brandishing a gun. The responding officer heading to the park um, witnessed a car speeding past him and thinking that that was the suspect he was going to go arrest or look into, he followed the vehicle and stopped them on a traffic violation. When the officer started registering the vehicle or searching the vehicle, um, he noticed that in the ashtray, there was remnants of weed and there was a piece of a joint. He arrested David Roth on charges of possession of marijuana. On August 14th, a couple who was walking around in the woods looking for blackberries to pick came across the body of the woman that was lying on the ground. She was fully clothed. She was wearing a Timex watch on her wrist and she was lying face down with her arms extended beside her. When the police got there and they searched the area, they found um, that she had no identification on her. There was no way to know how old she was or who she was. The only things they knew about her were that she had light brown hair and she was about five feet tall, 10 inches, and weighed about 155 pounds. Beyond that, they could not tell um, anything about her. So her identity remained an enigma for quite a long time. Extensive efforts were made to find out her identity, but this would not be. Her fingerprints were entered into CODIS. Now on the following day, August 15th, David Roth was released from jail.
He headed down to his buddy's house where he bragged about what he had done to the woman in the woods. Um, his friend, however, did not share Roth's enthusiasm or glee over what he'd done. So he went down to the Snohomish County Sheriff's Department and filed a police report. The police still had David Roth's car in custody. They went back and they looked in his trunk and lo and behold, what did they find? Bungee cords and a 22 caliber Marlin rifle. Now they had a weapon that matched the caliber that was um, used to murder the woman in the woods. Although they did not have the shell casings, they did have bullets. They had the bungee cords. The story matched what the crime scene had already told them happened. So police decided that on August 22nd, they were going to go down to the district court where David Roth had a uh, appointment for a hearing. However, um, David Roth never showed up, so they were never able to arrest him. That is, until a year later, in January 18th, 1979, he was apprehended in Port Orchard, Kitsap County, Washington. The Snohomish County Sheriffs transported Roth back to Everett via a ferry. While he was on the ferry, he confessed to the murder. He gave them details, specific details, about what he had done. However, when his trial came up, he pleaded not guilty, but the police had him. They had evidence. They had the weapon. They had the bungee cords. They had the bullets that held the um, same caliber as the bullets found at the crime scene. It was a slam dunk. They had closed the case. The woman in the woods still did not have her identity, and it would remain an enigma for the next 43 years. In 2008, there was an effort made to find out again what her identity was. They exhumed her body. Jane Doe's identity was not found in 2008, but genetic material taken from a femur bone was entered into the NCIS database, which is a database held by the FBI. At the time of his conviction, David Roth was ordered to serve life in prison on a first degree murder charge, but was able to parole out in 1998. Now, on July 25th, 1977, a father reported his 17-year-old daughter, Elizabeth Roberts, missing. He said that she had gone out with friends and she was due to be home at 11 p.m. and she never made it. Later on, she called her parents from Everett, Washington, and told them that um, she needed them to send her some money. Her parents pleaded and begged and cried with her and asked her to come home, but she simply told them that she'd think about it. Her mother wired her some money to the local C First Bank in Everett, Washington, but, the, but uh, Elizabeth never picked it up. Elizabeth did not seem to have taken anything with her, according to her father. Most of her things, or all of her things, were still home, and she was very much missed by her friends and her family who knew her as Lisa. An examination was done of her remains. It was determined that she was between the ages of 15 and 21 years old, with uh, 17 to 19 being the highest probability of her actual age. When David Roth was arrested, and he was interrogated. He had told investigators that he thought that the woman was about 25 to 30 years old, that she had wrinkles around her eyes, that um, she had a monotone voice that almost seemed like she was undereducated, 
and uh, that to his belief she was right-handed because of the way that she held her cigarette. Now, I think what he did was he did not want her to be identified. They, why would he destroy her face, right? She was 17 years old. She was young. She was pretty. We have her picture. We know that she was young and pretty. So why would he describe her as a 25 to 30 year old woman that looked haggard and wasted? That doesn't make sense. Remember, he showed no remorse uh, when telling his friend that he had killed her. So in 2008, when he was released from prison, he was interviewed. I quote, you pick up a stranger, a hitchhiker. She's not going to tell you her name. She's not trying to get personal. She didn't ask me my name. I've always wondered how to alleviate someone's sorrow. I don't know what you can actually say to someone who you've killed or loved one. I think I try to convince them I'm no longer the person that did that. And I've learned to value life. Roth died of cancer on August 9th, 2015. 38 years after he killed Elizabeth Ann Roberts. A team of 16 genealogists working with the Snohomish County Sheriff's Department pro bono had spent thousands of hours, lots of years, going through the databases and going through the um, genealogy websites. They came across a half-brother he did not have any recollection of her. He was adopted out as well when he was young. So they kept doing some more research and they came across, you know, now knowing that she was adopted, they came across a half sister that was also adopted by the Roberts. She said, I looked up to Lisa as my big sister who would spend time with me downstairs. We had a really good uh, bond because we were both adopted. Snohomish County Sheriff's um, detective said, for years, Detective Scharf has had precious Jane Stowe's uh, story linked in his email signature, trying to identify her. Although it wasn't the answer anyone wished for, precious Jane Doe, as he was known to Detective Scharf, um, will finally have her name back and she can now be returned to her family and loved ones. The police said that a memorial service is being arranged for Elizabeth and she will be buried in a plot in Oregon back with her family.